It's been a really long day, but I'm truly inspired by all the talks so far, and I hope all of you are also inspired by one way or another. Um, thank you very much for having me here today. I'm very honoured to be here amongst you, um, some of the greatest people who have made significant and notable contributions in enhancing, um, in enhancing the healing journey of our patients. I'm here today to share the team-based initiative named Life After Stroke, organised by the Singapore National Stroke Association. Well, before I begin, let me ask of all of you a question. How many of you, personally, has known someone who have had a stroke? Put up your hand if you have. Okay. Well, for those sitting in front, you could have a look and see how, much, how many people have really put up their hands as well. Yeah. So that really goes to show how stroke has really affected our lives. Um, and among all of you um, who know people who have stroke, um, how many of them are living a true life after stroke? If you're a caregiver or a friend, how can we help them see that there is a life after stroke? With these questions and a vision in mind, the Life After Stroke program was launched in 2014 as a means for our stroke survivors to find support during their recovery process. It provides our participants with vital recovery information and allows stroke survivors, their families and friends to find support and form friendship among others who are also on a similar journey. So in the presentation today, I will be covering a brief history of the Singapore National Stroke Association, the details and direction of the Life After Stroke program, information on how we started out, the sustainability of the program and our future plans. So the Singapore National Stroke Association, or SNSA for short, um, is a, a, an association that has been around for 20 years, more than 20 years in fact, um, and we have three main missions. They are to support stroke survivors and their families, to create public awareness and education. We also hope to be able to advocate for our stroke survivors on a national and international platform. Over the years, we grow with feedback from our participants and the ever-growing strength of our public, uh, volunteer pool. Similar to Patrick Bolan, he's a 15-year-old stroke survivor and president of the North Texas Stroke Association's Survivors Association, we aspire to improve our service by creating a support group that changes, challenges our participants in increments. And in the process of doing so, the support group aims to build a platform for the interaction and connection that helps ease the depression and isolation so common among our stroke survivors. So with that goal in mind, the Life After Stroke program was launched um, collaboratively by the SNSA and also with the NTUC Health Silver Circle. The word LIFE in the project is an acronym to learn, interact, flourish and engage. This word formed the basis and direction of the program. So learning really refers to the sharing of information on the broad scope of uh, stroke-related topics by health professionals and stroke survivors. Interaction is achieved by providing an environment for stroke survivors to come together, share their experiences and challenges, as well as to receive support and encouragement from peers. Participants flourished with group exercises organized and supervised by uh, therapists. Engagement also forms a big part of the program. This is achieved through active participation and self-empowerment in activities regarding stroke care, celebrations and activities. So Life Now occurs monthly at two locations. So I first uh, mentioned that it started out at NTUC Health Silver Circle at Serangoon Centre. And then uh, we got a lot of good response and feedback from our participants. So Life recently launched its programme in another venue, which is in Yishun, uh, just four months ago. It was held collaboratively with St. Lute at Wellness Kampong in Yishun. Um, in order to offer <coughs> convenience to our participants, the programme are held on a Saturday morning and transportation is provided for those who request for it. Participants are offered the option to pre-register via email or phone call. They can also turn up during the very day and registration can be done immediately before the start of the programme. With a fixed day, time and place every month, our participants found it easier to commit their time. Furthermore, 
we realized that over time, the same group of participants kept on joining the program and they even brought along other stroke survivors in their community. The aims of life was really to enhance um, the well-being and quality of life of our stroke survivors in the community. We aim to be able to provide self-empowerment, meaningful interactions and peer support to stroke survivors and their families. And lastly, to facilitate exercise, active participation and reintegration for stroke survivors. We are pleased that through this process, the psychosocial and emotional well-being of our participants have also been enhanced. I have observed participants who were initially a little bit shy, but um, as they continued to join more, they became more and more um, active and even encouraged others to join in. Over time, there is an immense sense of community and uh, group support amongst the stroke survivors and their caregivers. Healthy lifestyle, ongoing rehabilitation and good health habits are inculcated through self-empowerment throughout the process. So these photos will show you how self-empowerment, meaningful interactions and peer support group were formed during the program. And this was also achieved through group exercise, group activities, outings and through educational talk. So I mentioned before, LIVE stands for learning, interact, flourish and engage. So let us look at each component of the LIVE program. A major part of LIVE is the learning component where we reach out to doctors, nurses, and allied health professionals to educate and discuss about a broad range of topics related to stroke. Um, these topics include speech and language therapy, music therapy, traditional Chinese medicine, blood pressure monitoring, home modifications, cooking demonstration, and also ways to handle medications. During the initial phrase, we, uh, some of us came together to choose these topics and what we found to be beneficial for our stroke survivors. But um, over time, we sought feedback from our participants and tailored the program to suit what most of them want. Uh, we even have stroke survivors who came out to share topics, such as how they cope with disabilities, emotions, and how they reintegrate back into the community. Even though I am a facilitator, I found myself learning so much more from their sharings. And it also helped to broaden my perspective as a healthcare professional. To ensure successful delivery of the information, we also invited speakers who were not, uh, not just well-versed in the topic, but were also able to relate to the common problems that a stroke survivor may face. We also encouraged the invited speakers to avoid using technical words, jargons, and keep their speech and delivery short, while allowing for discussions and sharing by our participants. Next, interaction. Um, so interaction was promoted through providing an environment for stroke survivors to come together, share their experiences and challenges, as well as to receive support and encouragement from peers. This is a photo of um, to one of our stroke survivors sharing about his recovery journey with the participants. We acknowledge that caregiver also plays a big role in the recovery uh, journey of our stroke survivors. As such, we also form a caregiver support group so that they can share their experiences, insights with other caregivers. It was heartening to know that many of our participants found encouragement and strength through listening to the stories of many who shared similar journeys as them. More importantly, these sessions often encourage new stroke survivors to step forward and share their experiences and views. Not only does this keep participants engaged, it also serves to create a shared identity in the community. Successful delivery was done by establishing a secure environment for participants to share, ensure that only, uh, we try to ensure that only volunteers and family were present, and we try to facilitate conversation and allow for ongoing discussions. Okay. Now, flourished. Rehabilitation of stroke survivors is an ongoing process that should be emphasized and promoted. We have to ensure that the lives of our stroke survivors continue to flourish beyond, uh, beyond stroke. One such way is to maintain an active life after stroke. Through engaging trainers and therapists who have worked with people with disabilities, or stroke to conduct group exercise sessions. It is important to note that these sessions were not aimed to cater to the individual impairments of stroke survivors, uh, but to offer a means to promote a healthy lifestyle and varied exercise choice for our participants. 
So in order to ensure that everyone is able to participate, we include modifications of moves to suit the impairments of our stroke uh, survivors. So if they are weaker on one arm, we ask them to support with the other arm or ask them to move their shoulders to, in order to encourage more bilateral movements. Each session is facilitated by adequate volunteers and trained enthusiastic facilitators to form a positive and enjoyable atmosphere. We also encourage caregivers to be involved during such sessions. So some exercise sessions that we have held included Tai Chi, Pilates, boxing and even Zumba. Participants feedback that they really enjoy these sessions as they not only help them to feel more active, but they also allow them to have fun and learn some useful moves to help their rehabilitation. Okay, so um, as we grow, we realized we had to advocate more awareness and we had to get, recruit more volunteers. So we formed a Facebook group and also created videos among the regular volunteers um, in order to tell people what we are, who we are, and then we try to encourage more people to join us. The last component of life was engaging our participants. This was done through leisure activities that are fun and engaging. This includes activities such as gardening, drawing, cooking, and making decorative or useful items such as pouches and pencil holders. Successful delivery is ensured by engaging volunteers to facilitate, picking the right activities that the participants are most likely to enjoy, uh, um, gathering ongoing feedbacks, encouraging caregivers and family involvement, and also fostering an inclusive environment. Um, so allow me to share a story now. Um, there was one during a life after stroke session. I came into an art therapy session with my patient. Um, and then one of them, one of the participants, a stroke survivor as well. She's a very meek, a very shy uh, woman who is a stroke survivor. So she, she, she drew an art piece. She drew um, a, a woman, a chair beside, and then a crowd beside. So I was really interested. And then she wrote on top, Kopitiam. So I was, it piqued my interest. So I went up to her and asked, oh, what are you drawing? And then she, um, she being a very shy person, she only told me in Chinese, she said, ah, which means I just randomly draw. It was nothing interesting. So, but I was still very interested. So I went on to ask, who is that woman in the, in, in the middle of the picture? And she said, it's, it's me. So it's her. And then I said, oh, why is the chair beside? She said, oh, it's me. I've fallen from the chair. And why? Because I had weakness on one side of my body. And then I went on to ask, so who are these people around? She said, they're all Lucas who did not know what to do. And then she go on to say, this is the day I will never forget. <laughs> so a simple activity like just drawing, it can, pick, it can really um, get that emotions out of our patients that we will never know of. So she really tells her story through that picture, which is something that you will never know unless you went on to ask her about what, what she was drawing. Yeah. Okay. So I will now be talking about the process of how we first started out. In the initial phrases, we started out by first getting a venue and uh, setting a fixed time and day. The program was then sent out to the participants of SNSA and participants were then encouraged to attend with no requirement to pre-register. The program continued on a regular basis and after a period of 12 weeks, feedbacks were obtained um, and then we looked through the feedbacks, reviewed them and used them to fine-tune our program and activities for the upcoming year. We would then continue to obtain feedback from our participants every six months and use them to continuously improve our program. The same format was also used to improve the program in Ishun. Each month, we would issue pamphlets to our public um, through SNSA website. They usually contain a short description of the program or contains activities and important details such as the venue, date and time. Okay. So let us now review some of the topics that we've covered from life so far. Um, in, the, in the component of learning, we've covered topics such as diabetes, such as risk factors of stroke, which includes diabetes, um, respect, uh, sorry, hypertension and also high cholesterol. We've also covered issues such as dealing with anxiety, which are so common among our stroke survivors. Uh, we also invited stroke survivors to share how they overcome their disabilities. Interaction was promoted through facilitating peer support group and caregiver support group. Flourishing includes group exercise such as chair yoga, 
Tai Chi, Zumba. And these were engaging and done through fun activities such as lawn bowling, gardening, and art therapy. Having heard from my perspective and how we managed to set up the program, what do all our participants feel about it? Well, here are some of general feedbacks they've gotten, and most of them seem to be rather positive. So this uh, includes feeling of satisfaction with the program. Most of them find that the program was beneficial, useful, and relevant. Most of them enjoyed the sessions, um, led by engaging, supportive, and helpful facilitator. The location was conducive, and the time and group size was just right. What about the content? Educational talks and sharings were informative, relevant, and useful. Um, some of them also shared that they enjoy hearing and sharing their experiences. Therapy exercises were beneficial, helpful, and most of them felt that they have gained sufficient skills and knowledge to monitor their own health. So the self-empowerment. Life was also featured in newspapers reports through interviews with some of our stroke survivors. Many of them talk about how the program improved their lifestyle, changed their perspective of life after a stroke, and even motivated some of them to become an advocate for stroke survivors. The impact of our stroke survivors and their caregivers was great. These are some testimonials from our um, stroke survivors, from our participants. So some of them found a sense of community and group support through making friends and learning about the condition. And most of them were recommended to their friends and families. That in itself, I feel is the best positive feedback. In addition, it not only benefited the stroke survivors, but also benefited their caregivers. It was interesting that during my volunteer, there was a participant who had stopped his rehabilitation for a period of time. I mean, he thought there was nothing for him to look forward to. But after coming to life for a, a, a period of time, he discovered that rehabilitation is an ongoing process, and there was so much more that he could learn about fighting against this condition with other stroke survivors. That motivated him to, come, uh, to form new life goals and go back to therapy. In general, our program has made a positive impact of our stroke survivors uh, through encouraging healthy lifestyle changes and increasing participation in social activities and activities that they like. Future directions of life includes continuing the program um, and uh, de developing the services in life at Yishun, which is only four months old. We also hope to prepare for a third centre in the western part of uh, Singapore with the same format, rotating programmes as well as the current one running. So I will now show you some of the photos during the session. This shot. Thank you. So, in summary, we hope that through our program, we may make a humble contribution to the cause of helping stroke survivors lead meaningful and purposeful life after stroke. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Ng. Anyone? Can I open up the floor? Your last chance to ask a question. Anyone has any question for Ms. Ng? Well, I mean, it, it is a very comprehensive program that you have, you know, and obviously from, you know, the feedback that we have, you know, from the stroke survivors, they're all enjoying it. Can you tell with us, share with us just one key challenge you as a volunteer face, you know, in this life? Um, I think a lot of times it's getting the stroke survivors out of their home. Um, I, working as a physiotherapist, I have came across a lot of stroke survivors and then a lot of them would say that they don't want to get out of home for a varied number of reasons. Some of them feel that it's aesthetically they look different. They don't want to be identified as someone that's different. So they just don't want to come out. Even though um, 
you know, people shared with them that, oh, there's this support group going on, it's really fun, it's really engaging, it's really meaningful, they would say, no, count me out because I just don't want to get out. I don't want people to laugh at me. I don't want people to say that I'm disabled. Yeah. And of course, uh, practical challenges like um, it's hard for them to come to the centre because even though in, in the one in Serangoon, transportation was provided, but the one in Ishun, we didn't have that yet. So a lot of them tell, tell me that if it's raining, I can't come. Yeah, because for the sheer fact that they might fall if they were to come. Yeah. And then also the um, out in the community, actually there's not so much of um, disability friendly places. So things like staircase, things like um, ramps, they were all unable to just cross over this to come over to a centre. So that to me is one of the biggest challenges that we have. And these are many things that we still need to work on, yeah. you know, as a country itself as well. Thank you very much Ms. Ng for your sharing. Thank you.